Now, we look at the zero and we say, have we seen a zero before? Well, yes, one step back we saw a zero. One step back, so the next term is a one. We haven't seen a one before, so the next term is a zero. Now, we have seen a zero before, two steps back, so the next term is a two. Now, we haven't seen a two before, so we get a zero. We have seen a zero before, so we get a two. We've seen a two before, two steps back, so we get another two. And we've seen a two before, one step back, so we get a one. We've seen a one before, one, two, three, four, five, six, so we get a six. Yes. We haven't seen a zero before, so we get a zero, and so on. And the question is, what happens? <laughs> and the answer is, we don't know. Um, uh, Danek was able to prove that there are infinitely many zeros. We know the sequence is unbounded. But that's about all we know. So, Neil, I mean, what is the rule? Because that's what I'm trying to understand. The rule? Yeah, I mean, like, how far you are allowed to go in terms of building a sequence? I mean, can I just say, okay, well, there are n terms, I'm going to randomly select uh, an odd five to a random number preceding it. I mean, is this a rule? or? That's a rule. Accept? Certainly it's a rule, but is it, is it interesting? So one of the requirements is that the sequence should be interesting. And all, all my editors know that. And if you send in some, something that... Uh, another rule is it shouldn't depend on an arbitrary large parameter. You shouldn't uh, pick out all the numbers that have you know, 73 in their decimal expansion. Or something. There should be some... We, short descriptions are nice. Things of so general a interest. Is a sequence of numbers plus a candidate... Uh, Plus a prescription how to generate. Not, uh, I mean, there's some sort of a rule, right? Something yes, wrong. yes, yes. When you submit a sequence, yeah, we'd like to use just a sequence of numbers. I mean, you have to provide the an explanation. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, sure, sure, yes, yeah. And the editors are usually pretty friendly, but we have a few people who are um, somewhat more difficult to deal with, and sometimes we get into arguments with them about whether a sequence is worth including or not. But my feeling is, if it's worth going to the trouble of submitting it, and it's reasonably well-defined and, you know, interesting, like one sequence that was an obvious rejection was the number of pages in the nth volume of the Harry Potter. Was, <laughs> that was clearly not well-defined, and it was finite, and it was not all that interesting. <laughs> so it has to be infinite? Or? No, no, it doesn't have to be infinite. One prefers infinite sequences, but of course not, no. Do you know um, anything about this? Um, Arbitrarily large numbers? Yes. This one, I know quite a bit about it, just empirically, just by looking at it. It's, we, we know, as I said, that, it, that it's unbounded. There are infinitely many new terms. So it keeps growing. But how fast does it grow? Well, it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And there will be a run of things going up, and then it can drop down to zero again when we get a new term, and then it goes up. It looks like the limb soup, the, the, the upper envelope, is about n, roughly. I went out to a million terms, and I was getting numbers that were close to a million. Um, it looks like the gaps between the zeros are roughly log to the base 10 of n. That was a very crude figure. And it looks like every number eventually appears, but we don't have proofs for any of these observations. So, um, so this section of the talk will be about a bunch of sequences that have come in in the last year or so that no one has really worked on. It's kind of a present. Sequences where you say, boy, that's a lovely problem. I wish I had time to work on it. And I'll just mention a few of them. On my home page, there's a, an expanded version of there's a, a manuscript with this title, New and Interesting Sequences. And here's one. This is based on a generalization of Omar Paul's toothpick sequence. Can I switch over? Maybe I will. Let me try minimizing because I would like to show you the movie if this works. If you go to the OAIS and you type in toothpick sequence, this is not the sequence that people haven't worked on. This one we understand pretty well. It, this was
go type into the thing and go down to the second link, you see something called the movie version. And this was a sequence sent in by Omar Paul, who lives in Buenos Aires, and has sent in many lovely sequences. This one um, is based on toothpicks. So here's a toothpick. Uh, you, you have a big table and a lot of toothpicks. You, segments of length one. And, and each toothpick has two ends. So across each end, you put a new toothpick. And you do that repeatedly. That's the rule. And the sequence is, how many toothpicks are there? So we're going to add two toothpicks. Now that configuration there has four free ends. So we're going to add four toothpicks. Now we've got four free ends, and we add four more. Now we've got four free ends, and we add four more. Now we've got eight ends. So the question is, how many toothpicks are there at the nth generation? And if you let it run, it gets bigger and bigger, and it looks like this. Uh, this animation was made by David Applegate, and you can see that after a power of two, we're coming up to 128, after a power of two generations, it starts growing from the corners in a predictable way. So this one, it's quite easy to get a recurrence for. We analyzed this one completely, although the analysis got fairly complicated. But some of them are much harder to analyze. Uh, let me show you one more. I'll do update, yes. So this is a two-dimensional cellular automaton that I think was studied by Ulam back in the 50s. It's on graph paper that's made of hexagons. And the rule is, each hexagon is either on or off. And if one of your neighbors is on, exactly one of your neighbors is on, you turn on. So this is going to turn on six neighbors. Now, the things that have two on neighbors don't get turned on. The six on the outside will, so it looks like that. And if you let it run, it looks like this. And again, after a power of two, it starts growing from the corners. But what makes this interesting is that the growth after a power of two generations is different from what happened in earlier stages. So for this one, we don't have a recurrence. I've tried quite hard to analyze this, and I have some theory, but it's messy. It's very hard to see here, but if you look at the fine structure, the, the cavities, they're different in different generations. So let me return to the main talk. Stop, minimize, talk, one more part. So here's a new sequence. Play, what do I have to do? Play slideshow. Okay, so. The, the basic toothpick sequence we understand fully. This one is, instead of toothpicks, we use three-pronged toothpicks that look like this. They're like a bird's footprint. And you start off with two of them back to back. So here are two tridents back to back. That's stage one of the, of the iteration. And then at each free end, you add one of these. And it looks like that. And after you get to 32 generations, it looks like this. So this is uh, um, appropriate for the Christmas season. After 32 generations, you, you have uh, one, one, two, four uh, of these two triangles. And the sequence is, how many do we have after n generations? And the answer is we don't know. Um, a variant of the Fibonacci numbers is another one that really bothers me. So the Fibonacci numbers, each term is the sum of the two previous terms. This goes back to the 12th century. There's a related sequence that is associated with the name Narayana. It's Narayana's cow's sequence, where each term, it begins 1, 1, 1, and each term is the sum of the previous term and the term 2 back. So after 1, you begin 1, 1, 1, and then 1 plus 1, plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, and so on. That's sequence 930, easy to, easy to analyze. Last year, Reed Kelly submitted a variation on this. You take the sum of those two terms, but you divide by their GCD. 
So uh, 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6, but we divide by the GCD, which is 2, getting a 3, and so on. Um, 3 plus 3 is 6, divide by 3, because that's the GCD, and we get 2, right? and so on. And if you plot this, it, this is 1,000 terms, and you get a very wobbly line. This, this is not converging in any obvious manner. It seems that it's about, uh, the, the nth term is roughly e to the about um, n over 9. But nothing is known. We have no non-trivial bounds on this sequence. Nothing is known about its growth. I think it's a very nice question. Um, then, yes, meanders. So when we got to around, to around 200,000 sequences, we're now up to 221,000. But when we got up to 200,000 sequences, we decided to award sequence number A 200,000 to the nicest sequence that came in around that time. And so uh, Jonathan Wilde, who's a um, professor of music at McGill, sent in this sequence. This is, these are meanders. There's a, a classical meander sequence, but this is a bit different. It's the number, I'll, I'll show you the next, I, I drew out, I'll come back to this one, I drew out the case of um, the fourth term so that you can see it more clearly. You have a, a four by four grid of cells. You want a closed path that visits every cell. And uh, the rule is um, it, it mustn't cross itself and uh, it has to visit every cell and it can go through an, uh, a cell more than once, if you want. So with four cells, there are four ways to do it. A four by four, sorry, a four by four grid, there are four ways to do it. And if there are, if there are, uh, if it's a five by five grid, then there are 42 ways. So I think this is a lovely looking picture. Um, very little is known about this. In fact, nothing is known beyond this. We know the first, um, this is five, six, seven, eight. We don't know the ninth term. And somebody recently worked out the eighth and tenth terms. But nothing is known about how fast it grows or if it's related to some other sequence. Nice picture, nice question. Another um, meander type sequence is, was sent in by Susanna uh, Wienand. And I won't do any more than show you a picture. This is a, an example. She has a conjectured formula for it, which I think should be provable. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it hasn't been proved yet. Uh, the classical meander sequence is 5, 3, 1, 5. And that's the number of ways. If you have a road that goes from east to west, and you have a river that crosses it six times, it can do you know, something like that number of ways that a river can cross a road, the number of ways that a, a, a curve can cross a line, n times. It's, that's the classical the end of the sequence. Yes. So um, the number 247, you may think this is a silly sequence, mm -hmm. but I actually am a little bit fond of it. Mm -hmm. What's the special property of 247? Well, if you write down the determinant of 247, 247, 247, and work it out, you get 247. And it's the smallest non-trivial number with that property. Generalize. Uh, this was, there's a paper about this by Lukov uh, in 2011. But, and 47 terms are known. Really, it's nothing. It's an unsolved problem. Um, and then sequences with no final repeats. Where were the bases? with base 10? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Same as um, sequence with, with no final repeats. I'll just say a little a moment or two about this. I was because I was hoping that Professor Zalberger would be able to help solve this question. <laughs> so um, because it's exactly your kind of problem, I think. Um, so the question is: How many binary sequences of length n are there that have no final repeats? Final repeat means like um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 has a final repeat because 1 is repeated twice at the end. 
zero, 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 one, zero, one has zero, one repeated. Okay? On the other hand, one, one, zero, zero, one has no final repeat. And it begins like that. If n is odd, then it's easy to show it's twice the previous term. If n is even, then, then uh, it's not quite twice the previous term. You have to subtract a certain quantity. And, well, we have studied this quite hard. And um, we have 200 terms, which is quite a lot for a, a, to have 200 terms and not have a formula. But we don't have a formula. It seems tricky. We have a very strong conjecture that uh, it grows like 0 0.27004339 dot, 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 dot. I can give you 30 decimal places um, times 2 to the n. But we don't even have a proof that that limit exists. Dissections. I don't think I have time to talk about these dissections. Number of ways to dissect a rectangle, not a square, into rectangles of equal area. Um, one of my favorite unsolved questions is, what's the smallest number of pieces that you can cut up a triangle into to make a square? using scissor cuts, rectifiable cuts. Uh, you can cut up a triangle into four pieces that can be rearranged to make a square. It's an open question, I believe, to show that you can't do it with three pieces. So four seems, so the number of, this is a really unsatisfactory sequence. The minimum number of pieces for dissecting an n-gon into a square. We know just one term, one. Any others? Nothing is done. It, this seems to be shocking. Um, the future. Let me, uh, in the last section, I'll talk about uh, three topics about the future of the OAIS. One thing I've had in mind for a long time is to have an exhibit in science museums all over the country, all over the world, that would demonstrate the OAIS. Uh, people would walk in, children, grown-ups, mathematicians, they'd walk in, they'd see a kiosk or some kind of machine, they'd type in a sequence, we would challenge them with interesting sequences, the idea being to lure people into mathematics, showing them really nice sequences, um, also teaching them about how to guess the next term, stuff from the, the introduction of, the, of those two books, for example, giving hints about what you do. You take differences, you look at factorizations, and so on. I've almost got a, a pilot version in HTML version uh, visible on the OEIS webpage. But this costs money. We, we, if we're going to do this, we're going to need money to develop the kiosk. So it's, I think it's a really good idea, but it, it, it needs work, it needs money, it needs um, support. Another thing for the future is to standardize entries in the OEIS. At the moment, all the references are in all different kinds of formats. I don't know what the best format is. Is there a uniform format that, that takes care of... Um, Journal references, books, links, URLs. I would like to systematize, just to make it easier to search. BibTeX is OK, but BibTeX doesn't really work. There's, it has some drawbacks. Another thing is, I'd like to have links to MathSciNet, the Centralblatt, the IEEE Explorer, and so on from the sequences. I'd like to put the formulas into some uh, more systematic way, maybe ASCII Math or uh, MathML. And uh, programs need to be standardized. So with, with 200,000 sequences, it'll, this will take a lot of work, but it would seem that this could be, we could cloud source this once we decide what has to be done. And uh, the last topic I want to mention is the future. Um, our editors are very overworked. We might need to hire somebody. So I'm thinking that maybe in the long run, we need to get maybe one or two or three maybe interns or postdocs, and we would pay them to help with the editing. But this would be um, a, a radical new step. We don't have very much money at the moment. If we're going to do this, it's going to take quite a lot of money every year. Maybe we're, we're talking about raising 250000 a year to, to do this. And so this would be a, a tremendous change. Uh, so far, we've been running on a shoestring. Our budget is very small, and so it's a question whether whether we should do this. Oh, here we go for you, no? uh, Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think you'll like it. Yes. I 
He has one sequence in the database. Oh, really? The pancake flipping sequence, yeah. yes. <laughs> and there are other rich fields in it with limitations which would contribute a tiny percent of their income. For example, time ones. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, well, and that's a very good idea. Show. So I, it's, it'll, be a, but it'll be a big step, a, a radically different step for the OEIS. So I don't know. And um, that's the end. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for a beautiful talk. And yet we get answer questions in private. Also, your